Hi everyone, this is Emmanuel from Parsimony. This is another video about how to use R, the programming language for data analysis. Um, and one of the first steps in using R for data analysis is to actually get data into R. And one of the file types that customers often send me is a CSV. And so this video is about how to get data from a CSV into R so that you can do uh, your data analysis on it. So I'll assume you have a client folder and then within that client folder we'll have a folder for the project that we're working on. In this case I'm just calling it the CSV project. And I like to start out with at least two subfolders. One folder for the code we'll be writing and the other folder for the data that we'll be using that the client provided. In this case it's called input. And it's within that folder that we have the CSV data. And I'll share this folder through a link on the YouTube channel here. Here's a quick note. CSV stands for comma separated values. It's a very simple file format type. It has the data separated by commas. And that's it, just text, numbers, and then commas tell it um, where the columns are. So ID, comma, name, comma, indicating that these are in separate columns. And then you see the data are like that as well. For the first person, their ID is one, comma, their name is Sheridan, Kelsey, comma, etc. This simplicity allows CSV files to store a lot of data not take up very much space so that's kind of nice because if you have really big data files that your client gives you in csv then you can read them into r pretty quickly the downside of csv files is that they don't store all of the different things that xls files can store excel files for example here i've got a color-coded value for 758 um, you can't store that in a csv you can try but it won't work so i'll go ahead and do that here make it green, try to save it. I don't get an error or anything, but when I close it and then try to open up the CSV again, it's not there. And that's because again, CSV is fundamentally just a whole bunch of text and numbers or numbers uh, separated by commas and that's it. Now it's always a good idea to look at the data once your client has given it to you. And in this case, the my computer opens up the CSV using Excel like a lot of computers do. Um, and I can see that there are 20 rows here um, the first row is actually the column heading. So these are the names for these columns slash variables. Um, and these rows here represent the data. And so you can see that first column is an ID. The second column is a name with where it contains the first name and last name, age. There's some inconsistency here. Here is written out as text, um, income, there's a field for education and then there's credit score. So it's good to read this and look at the data because then when you read it into R, you want to check that it came in correctly. So now we'll start R Studio, and I'm going to go to file and new project. I'll create another video about what projects are, but basically there's a feature of R Studio that allows you to better organize your work. And so I'm going to click on existing directory because I've already created a project folder for the client and I'll browse to that folder. So again, I will share these fake data through a link. Here is the project, the CSV project. So I'll click on the folder and then I'll click on open. And then I'll also select this open in new session and then create project. So here we are in our studio. It's got the project name right here and I want to read in the data. So I'm going to use this function in R called read.csv. I'll type in read.csv and you'll notice that our studio does a nice thing. It starts anticipating what I want and read CSV is the function that I want. So I will click on that. But before I do notice here also that it tells you a little bit about the function. Um, the things that it expects. These things are called arguments. So file is an argument, header equals true is another argument. Um, I'll get into that in a second. So I'll just click on read CSV. And the most important thing that I need to provide it is this thing called file. So I'll say file and then equal. And you see how it's also anticipating this. So it says file equal, and then it's giving me 
information about what this is. And so what I need to provide to it is the file path to the CSV. File equal and I'll provide double quotes. I'm using a PC. I use PC for everything. Um, I do not have a Mac. And so for PCs, you need to use a forward slash when you're entering in the path to any file or folder in R. And um, if you don't know exactly where the file is relative to where you are here, um, you can just, when your cursor is in these double quotes, hit tab and RStudio will um, allow you to sort of navigate to it so you um, you know that you put it in the input folder so I'll hover over input and then I'll hit tab again and now you can see that it's got the contents inside that folder and so it's this one that we want customer as data.csv okay and so um, this is the path here you notice that you don't have to put the entire path like C colon, forward slash, etc. That's one of the benefits of using R projects is that it knows we're in this folder here. And so it's going to anticipate that you want stuff relative to this folder and the input folder is there. Now, if we just run this, it'll do exactly what it's we expect. And I'll highlight that and I'll click run. And it read the data file and it put it here on the console. It literally just read it and then it spat it back out. But that's not what we want. We actually want it to be remembered and used by R, allow us to use it, like do things like change columns, etc. And to do that, we actually need to put it in R's memory. And the way we can do that is to assign the result here to an object that we've created. So um, I will here put in customer a data that's just the name that i want to uh, give it and i'll m make an arrow pointing to it and what this means is that i want r to read in the file and then put it in this object that we're going to call customer a data and notice when i highlight that and then hit run now up here i have this object called customer a data it's got 20 observations of six variables. Um, I can actually click on it here. Our studio allows me to view it. I can't change it in here, but it's nice because I get to view it. And I can see that the contents do look exactly like they were in the CSV. So that's good. I now have this object in R and I can manipulate it. I can fix this 72 so that it's all consistent. I can get rid of these 324 age which obviously isn't correct um, and I can do some cleaning before I do the analysis and I'll create other videos about how to clean and transform your data in preparation for analysis. Here's another quick note don't worry about destroying or altering your original data by using R. You don't have to worry about harming the original data. What's happening when you're reading in the data is that you're just reading it and then copying the content and putting it in this object called customer data. You can delete this, you can delete columns, you can delete rows, you can do whatever, and the original file itself will not be changed. Um, so I'll give you an example. So go to customer a data here, and it's nice because our studio uh, will fill that in and say, are you talking about this? Yes. So then um, I will manipulate a certain column. Actually, I'll delete a certain column, and so that I indicate which column by using a dollar sign and let's say I want to delete the ID so I'll say null and looking here you see I have six variables but now I'm going to do this I'm going to delete that ID column and I'll hit enter and you'll notice up here now I have just five columns I click on that ID is gone um, but it's not a problem for the original data because I was never manipulating the original data. I was just manipulating the copy that's in R. You'll notice here that in the original data, I just have ID. Now, of course, um, when you do this, if I were to do this here in the CSV and then I hit delete and then I saved it, it would in fact go away. So this is one of the benefits to using R is that you can work freely on your files, um, do all the cleaning that you need to do, have a copy of all of this stuff the steps you took meanwhile your original data set is left intact and you don't have to have several different versions of that original data set if you found this video informative 
and you want to learn more about how to read different types of data into R, as well as do things like transforming your data, um, cleaning the data, and then conducting analysis for your clients, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.